Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be filming kind of a little talk to you, like a podcast style video, if you will. So you don't have to see anything, which, you know, literally no pun intended by the title of this video, but it, I was going to film this, like actually me talking to the camera, but I'm just not, I'm not feeling it today. So you guys can just put your phone or your computer down or whatever you watch this on and go about your day and just listen to me talk because today's topic is very, very important, especially if you are a viewer of my channel or honestly a doll collector in general, because you will come across other doll collectors with this same, I don't want to say disadvantage, but sometimes, which is what we're going to get into, it's kind of hard. So if you couldn't tell by the title of today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the harsh reality of being a legally blind doll collector. So I've thought about this for a while and I've talked about this in past videos, but we've gained so many more new members to our little community here. I thought it was very, very important to keep this subject relevant because I do mention in most of my videos about my eye condition and this isn't going to be explaining my eye condition. I have videos on that. I could do an updated one probably this summer, but this is going to be talking about the things that I deal with that are very difficult when it comes to collecting. So this is going to cover all the lines I collect such as American Girl, Rainbow, Shadow, Monster, and Ever After High along with Bratz. I think I've got everybody covered because I don't collect OMGs anymore. I still have them, but I don't, they're not on display and I'm not actively buying them. So basically, with my eye condition, I say all the time I'm legally blind. What does that mean exactly? I am not fully blind, so I am blessed enough to have a fair amount of vision. Honestly, if you saw me out in public, and you didn't know that something was different, the fact that my eyes move from a condition called nystagmus or dancing eyes, that would be a dead giveaway because I can't make eye contact. Or if I had my cane out or my guide dog, but Winter has since now retired. Um, or if I am, usually my issue is when I'm going to the checkout, I hate not doing self checkouts because I have to lean down to get super, super close to you know put my card and my pin in and things like that so that's really a dead giveaway otherwise i would just look like a normal but what even is normal you know human being shopping or doing whatever so that kind of gives you a little bit of context as to what we're dealing with here i am hoping my voice stays with me through this because ever since i got sick like a week and a half ago i haven't like completely recovered my voice so hopefully we're hopefully we're good so some things that are really hard for me when doll collecting. First of all, we're going to talk about face mold screening or face sculpt. So face mold is American Girl, screening is Bratz, and face sculpt would be all of the highs, if you understand, because I collect four of them now, so it's a little bit difficult. So um, it is hard for me. When I was a kid, I didn't know that so I collected Bratz and American Girl as a kid and I didn't know there were different screenings or face molds okay now looking back on it I realized if I would have paid more attention I definitely could have figured it out because if you're familiar with American Girl you can definitely tell some of them like a just mold from a Kaya to a classic if that is completely foreign to you it's it's okay it's fine Bratz I find it very hard to tell any type of like difference at all but with American Girl like I said I can usually tell now like I do have trouble kind of with distinguishing a Josefina from a classic, but if it's like a Jess or a Kaya mold, I know, or an Addy mold or something, the ones that are easily distinguishable from each other to me. So face mold is very, very hard for me. Face mold screening and then face sculpt. There are some rainbow highs I can tell. My favorite mold is the one that comes on Simone and Tiara. Um, but I can't really tell like who else has it. Those two, I was surprised I was able to pick that up, but I can't really tell because it's super hard for me. So when I review dolls, I'm like, 
I usually say I'm not sure, you know, which sculpt they have because I genuinely do not know. And again, with like Monster and Ever After and things like that, I just, I don't know. I can't tell. Does that make me any less of a doll collector because I simply don't know? Absolutely not. So if you feel that there are some things you just don't know or you are physically unable to pick up on, it doesn't mean you're less of a doll collector or less of a fan or whatever. It just means that it's a little bit more difficult for you. So that's the first thing. Just the recognition of the facial features is quite difficult for me. Sticking with the topic of the face, because it's very important because the faces are very small and there's lots of detail there. So for example, with American Girl, they have things at like the pinwheel eyes okay and people ask me okay so does this doll have pinwheel eyes or does this doll have i know when the twins came out are isabelle's eyes felicity's shade of green i genuinely cannot tell you i don't know it's very very difficult for me i'm not colorblind but i do have a difficult time telling like purples and blues sometimes i can't really tell um green a certain shade of green to me looks gray so honestly I do have some difficulty telling colors apart so that's another thing and you know obviously with the other dolls the smaller ones the eyes really aren't an issue because I can see their eye color much better than American Girl but with the smaller dolls the issue is makeup and I had this problem with my Rainbow High Series 4. This was a big issue for me. I went and I purchased four of the six Rainbow High Series 4 girls, and for me to purchase them in the store, I would have to sit there for like twice as long as 2020 Vision collectors would because, yes, I like to pull them all out and look at the best one. However, it is very hard for me to see what is in that box. So for me, with Rainbow High Series 4, I was more worried about looking at their eyeshadow. I didn't even think to look at their lips. And I ended up with three of them, Mila, Jewel, and Delilah, all had really, really bad lips. And Delilah, you guys know, that is my favorite Rainbow High doll ever. So that was just absolutely heartbreaking. Luckily, I had this incredible subscriber who sent me a second Delilah, and that is my perfect display Delilah that I will love and cherish forever. But it's really, really sad. I understand manufacturing errors happen, but when you have bulk manufacturing errors like MGA did with that specific batch of dolls, it makes it hard for not all collectors, like, okay, not normal sighted collectors, but also collectors who, you know, can't see that. And dolls like Mina, Mina Fleur has a nude lip. Luckily, my Mina has a perfect lip, but that would have been absolutely terrible because I genuinely could not have, you know, seen that. However, I will say if I did check the girl's lips, I probably, especially with Delilah, Delilah has very pale skin with a red lip. I probably would have been able to have seen her lip mess ups but you're just so excited and you're purchasing a new doll and there's people around and I don't really care what people think of me shopping in the doll section I could care less but just people in general no I'm not really a fan of those so I just get kind of a little bit overwhelmed and then I get home and I'm like oh my god but I'm also too much of an introvert and an anxious human being to take the doll back but for me honestly there's also a flip side to this because if I have a doll that has messed up makeup or a second hand doll that has like a chipped lip or something or a minor stain I can't see it unless I put my phone super close to it or actually like my actual eye so like my princess Chloe she has a mark on her forehead and that doesn't bother me I haven't tried to get it off yet she was a gift from one of my best friends um I haven't tried to get it off yet but I look at her and I don't even see it until, you know, I get really close. Then I'm like, oh yeah, girl, you have that. Like, it doesn't bother me. So although I say it's difficult for me to see if there's any type of flaw or defect within their face, like sometimes there is a flip side to it that I can't, it doesn't bother me. Now, another example of this is my Shadow High Mara Pinkette. She was a gift from my best friend, and apparently she has a flaw with her eye that I can't tell. So many people seem to point it out rudely, I might add, and I'm like, you know what? It doesn't bother me. It makes her a little bit more quirky, and she was a gift from like my favorite person on this earth, so I would never, ever get rid of her or change the Mara I have because my best friend picked that one out for me. So anyway... 
Now that we've covered the topic of identifying face molds, screening and screenings and sculpts, and also facial features and face paint or makeup, I want to move on to what it is like to collect them on the secondhand market or being very new to collecting. Because even with dolls like American Girl, I know like the back of my hand, when I see some secondhand and they're just, they have no clothes on, they're kind of disheveled, it might take me a little bit to actually figure out who they are. Now, I'm not saying this is for all of them. This is just for some. And it's definitely hard for me for Bratz, Monster, and Ever After. Yeah, I might see that doll and I might know she's a Frankie or a Briar Beauty, but I have no idea which line she's from if she doesn't have any clothes on. Or if they're wearing somebody else's outfit, Again, we go back to those facial details that are really hard. So how, how does one go about collecting these dolls and, you know, making sure I don't buy the same doll I already have? Well, you know, sometimes when you buy a lot, there's a dupe in there or whatnot. That's fine. But I have learned to, I was never good at this in school, like ever. Like I don't like to ask for help because I always feel like I'm inconveniencing people. I don't know why. I come from a very generous family, so it makes no sense. But I have resorted to asking the community for help. So I will post on my Instagram story, please help me identify these dolls or these pieces. And you guys have been so kind and so helpful. And I seriously appreciate that because again, you are put back in that mindset like, oh my God, if I don't know these dolls, like I, people might see me as like a terrible collector or something. I don't know. That's just me being a paranoid, nervous human being. But like, it's just so nice to know that you guys are accepting and you understand that I may have a little bit of trouble, but you still love to watch my content and interact with me. And I really, really appreciate that. So I love buying dolls secondhand, but I do definitely need a little bit of help. And I know that everybody does sometimes, and that's why there are websites out there that are for doll identification. But even then, even when like I use um, Shelly's Flickr all the time, and especially for brats, even then it's very hard for me to tell, even though she's got beautiful close up pictures and stuff, it's just hard. So I always ask for confirmation because it is really difficult and I don't want to be on my channel and saying like, oh, okay, so I got this doll and she's a whatever and then have it actually not be that doll that'd be like so embarrassing oh my god so I know that happens but you know what I mean I just bought a picture day spectra and it would be terrible if I said I just bought a signature spectra vondergeist and it's like no that's literally not who that is so I wouldn't have known if she wouldn't have had her complete full stock on her and I did check the pictures and it is in fact picture day spectra I unboxed her on a live stream that's why you didn't see any videos of her but yeah she's here now um Anyway, moving on to our next point. So again, we're moving back to small, fine details. This doesn't really apply to American Girl, which is why I love them, because they are larger and it's easier for me. However, the only issue I have with American Girl and their super tiny details is when they make... I have this one particular pair of pajamas when they make things with buttons and you have to now this is this isn't just me this is literally everyone because our fingers are so big when they make those little buttons and you have to put the button through the hole it's like can this be velcro or snaps or something it's just hard so that's really the only issue but with my four no my five sorry my five smaller doll lines so the brats and then all the highs they come with jewelry or super super tiny accessories like little tiny earrings necklaces really they're not that bad or bracelets or some of them have rings and stuff some of them have hair accessories like mila and mina they come to mind heather such small hair accessories so that is very very difficult for me and with monster high g3 they come with a lot of extra plastic accessories that I hate because A, I don't know what to do with and B, some of them are really, really hard for me to identify. And I know some of you have actually had trouble like figuring out what certain things are. Even some like larger YouTubers have and that makes me feel better. But it's just kind of like I, I get really nervous when I interview or interview. Oh my God. When I review certain dolls because I'm like, okay, hopefully nobody's going to freak out at me because I don't know 
what the heck this piece of plastic is and I shouldn't I don't I don't want to say I get really nervous but I kind of get like oh god what's gonna happen now but it's fine I'll still post the video like I don't care like it's fine it's literally a doll it's okay but again the super super small pieces are really kind of intimidating for me that's why you guys might not see my dolls with a lot of jewelry or their smaller accessories because sometimes I do keep the jewelry on however other pieces if I know it's prone to falling off or could go missing really easily I do pack it away because you guys know I have animals um, especially my cat Olivia she is these are her dolls they're not mine um, she's actually in here while I'm recording this um, she is prone to, she will not get on the shelves and mess with them, but if I move a doll and her earring falls off or whatever, Olive will definitely come and probably steal that, and that's not good. So, that's another thing. The smaller accessories are difficult. And with that being said, I think I have covered all of the, you know, little, little struggles I go through to do this, but... It is completely worth it. I work as hard as I can to be able to make these videos for you all and to properly review products. And as I always say, show you guys these dolls from my point of view. Those are just really the main things. It's all the fine detail and things like that. That's very, very hard. And like if there are any imperfections on my dolls, like I said a million times, it doesn't bother me. So it shouldn't bother you. Some people feel the need to say it does bother them, but it's fine. It doesn't bother me. I just really wanted you guys to kind of have it here we go another ridiculous pun but I don't really know what else to use for it like an eye-opening experience and like a view into what I go through and it's not just one doll line it's all the doll lines I collect there's always going to be something that makes it a little bit more difficult but again I don't let that hinder me from collecting and this platform is yes to spread awareness about collecting dolls and share it with all of you but it's also if you didn't know the main reason I created this YouTube channel was to be a legally blind like a legal blindness awareness platform but it kind of evolved into the doll channel but I'm always going to be sprinkling in things about my eye condition or my mental health because they're very important that's who I am and I want you all to know because seriously people just do not know that others are different and they just they're just not polite, you know, like I, that could be like a whole nother video, but I really want to thank you all for all of your help in, you know, identifying dolls or letting me know certain things. You have all been so kind and so welcoming and I really, really appreciated it. So I wanted to let you guys know, like, this is just, this is kind of a little behind the scenes of what I go through, but the main message here is I'm never going to let it stop me and I'm never going to stop collecting dolls. So I really, I really appreciate you all and thank you so much. Anyway, if you have not already, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to join the fam, and tap that really cool notification bell so you know the exact moment I post a new video. Have a blessed day, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye, everybody.